Hello and welcome to a review of what might be the best tool I currently have in my toolkit for custom figures and you will see why uh, during the rest of this video. So this is the Creality Otter Lite. It's a completely wireless 3D scanner, you can also use it wired. Despite its huge range of doing between 20 and 2000 millimeters, it maintains an accuracy of up to 0.05 millimeters, which again you'll see during the scans that I do. To save you doing the maths, that's 5% of a millimeter. This thing also has four lens stereo vision, which means you're getting a very high quality scan with very good accuracy. On top of that, it can scan up to 30 frames a second, which is very good for a 3D scanner. And my personal favorite thing about this is it can scan black and metal objects without needing to be sprayed. So I've got scanning sprays that I've had to get for my previous scanner. This thing doesn't need it, and it's such a relief to just be able to scan the object as is. Obviously, unless it's transparent. On top of that, it's got 24-bit full color scanning, which again, you will see later in this video. So with the scanner, you do get a turntable, which you can see here. This isn't an electronic one, so it's not like auto, which I personally find better, as this isn't the kind of scanner you just sit down and let the turntable do the work. You move the scanner around itself. And also, you do get the cables as well. There's a charging cable there, um, which is also a power cable, plus the actual data cable. I don't be using the charging cable for this because I use wireless. There's a wrist strap there that you can attach to the scanner. There's also these bag straps that can go onto the case, so you can just put the whole case for the scanner over your shoulder. Then you get these registration markers, which just makes kind of like featureless scanning much easier because it gives something for the scanner to catch onto. This is a cloth for cleaning the scanner lens. And this is your calibration board, which I believe is made out of tempered glass, which is an interesting calibration board and very nice quality. So this is the piece they give you to do your test scan with, which Creality seems to have a thing with owls. They used to do the owl as the test print on the old Creality, I think it was the Ender series, or it might have been the whole series, I just only know it from the Ender series. And then you get this phone clip, which I won't be able to show in this video because I use my phone to record, but you can attach your phone to the scanner and have a live feed on the handheld device, rather than watching your laptop which attaches to the handle, as you can see here. And obviously this is the handle, it's got the battery in it, so you don't have to worry about having it constantly plugged in. And the battery life is very long on this thing. And then you've got the scanner itself, and this thing is incredibly nice to look at. Let alone what it's capable of, this is just a very nice piece of technology to look at. It's done a very good job with the overall design. Big fan of kind of matte and gunmetal finish. That QR code on the back is to connect your phone to the actual device through the Wi-Fi network that it has. But attaching this to the handle, you can see you just rotate that little dial on the bottom. Obviously you want to go clockwise with it. And that just screws it onto the actual handle. Holding the pins in place so you can get the power through. You can see I did charge this up fully. It does have some charge straight out of the box, but I wanted to charge it up fully for the video. Now moving over to the Creality Scan software, this is the latest version, this is the V4 I believe. As of recording this, this is a beta software, this warning that pops up is for a different scanner so you don't need to worry about that if you're using the Otter Lite. Select the Otter Lite, it will show you how to plug it in, how to set it up, and it will give you some helpful tips on getting ready to scan. So the software itself, very intuitive, very user friendly, I was really worried because some softwares like this can be really technical and hard to understand with a lot of jargon. This is very simple and just a nice easy procedure to follow. So I'll give you like just a quick walkthrough of what it actually shows you on the software. And again, just showing you the basics of scanning so you can get straight into it without having to go through your trial and error. And of course, they're showing the owl, which is what they give you, which is, again, a very helpful thing to just kind of start off with. And you can see I did do a test scan before getting into the video. I wanted to understand the software, and I really didn't need to because I could have learned it as I went through. Again, very easy software to follow. And you can see here, this is the first scan I've ever done with this scanner, and it came out very, very well. So obviously, you've got the color version that I've just shown. This is the actual mesh and the model itself, the STL file of that. And it created an incredible bit of detail. 
I'm fairly sure I scanned this on the medium setting, which for this it should have been small and it still picked up so much detail. And you can see I did the whole filling for the top of the head and the bottom. I could actually have raised the scanner and got on the top of the head, uh, but again, first time scanning. I didn't realise that it would track as well as it ends up doing. I also should have used the plain hole fill for the bottom rather than the curve because obviously it's rounded the bottom hole rather than just leaving a flat surface. But going back to the home page, let's start a new project so I can show you from beginning to end how this kind of thing works. So for doing the wireless setup, when turned on you'll have the light bridge option show up as a Wi-Fi network. You want to connect to that and your laptop or whatever device you're using will connect to the scanner via the personal Wi-Fi network. You can see there it says scanner connected tells you which scanner it is and you can see on the scanner itself it's now lit up green rather than the blue to show you that it's connected and ready to go. So now getting back into the project, open a new project and if you go to preview it'll immediately open up the actual scanner and what it's seeing. And you can see the three viewports here so at the top right you've got the infrared camera Underneath that you've got the RGB camera, which is just kind of a normal camera, which you can see my face now. And then you've got the actual scan and the data of what the scanner itself is picking up. And also I'm not going to scan my face, but you can see it's doing a very good job of picking it up, even with my glasses on. Now, I've had a lot of requests to fix this guy. I do have to fix that blemish on his chest, but that's not what we're fixing today. A lot of people have asked me to fix his very thin neck, which I'm very... I'm still not particularly sure on because without the thinness of the neck he's not going to be able to move his head much but for aesthetics let's get this fixed. So setting it up so I can get a nice scan and get better lighting and the LEDs on the back of this scanner where the three buttons are are actually indicators so the range at the side where it shows you whether it's good, optimal or like poor for the scanning distance those colours come through on the back of the buttons and it will show you without having to look at the screen whether you're too close or too far. And you see the tracking for this is actually just incredible. So I've got experience with scanners before, obviously, and this is possibly the best tracking I have seen. Like I haven't had to put any spots on it for it to track. It's picking up the black, the pearlescent green and the white without any issues. It's just, it's picking up everything very well. You can see it glitches out very occasionally and that's because I'm moving the scanner too far away and it loses its kind of landmarks of what it's using to maintain that stability but if you go back to an area you've already scanned it recalibrates where it was and it fixes itself so all of these issues are just my blunders and it does a very good job of catching all of this detail like there is no discrepancy between the black the white and the pearl green and you've got metallic flake in there so this is a very impressive thing to be able to scan as well as it has now ending the scan session, you can see this is the raw file we're left with, and it looks very rough, and when I originally did my scan, I was quite put off by this. I thought that this might have some issues, and that maybe this isn't going to be quite as detailed of a scanner as I'd hoped it would be. But just wait until you do the one-click processing. Now we'll see this is the raw scan file, so if we go up here to process, you can see the one-click, just run OK on default. And I've sped this up by 10 times, so this took around four and a half minutes, I think, which is very good because this was a very long scan. I took my time trying to capture every detail, every overhang. And to be able to process it all in four and a half minutes on its own without my input, you can see me in the reflection of the laptop messing around, having a drink. And overall, just sitting and waiting for it to finish. And you can see already it's crisped up that detail very quickly. And then you've got the color. And not only does it capture the colour extremely well, this is a very good match of what the actual file or actual physical object looks like. It's really not far off with where the layers are and where the colours match. You can see that there's a couple issues, like there's a black spot on the back of the left foot, which should be white. And there's some weird kind of trickling on one of the spikes. But aside from that, it has nailed the colour on this. And going to just the mesh itself. It has picked up so much detail, you can actually see the triangles in the Omnitrix and you can see that there's layered areas for that Omnitrix as well. This thing has done a fantastic job 
and this is without me having to do any manual processing so far. Obviously there's bits at the bottom where it didn't quite catch uh, in the crotch area, on the inner leg, and on the base of the feet, but these are very easy areas to fix. And then obviously it's caught bits of my cutting mat uh, in the scan, but you can remove those very easily as well. Now I make the mistake of going into edit first, what I should have done is actually fixed the mesh before. So you can see here I'm simplifying the mesh. Again, this should have been done afterwards and you'll see why in a second. Don't need to do any of this part. Don't want to smooth any of the detail, don't want to smooth anything. I'm quite happy with this as it is. We're going to hole filling. I want to do manual and this allows me to select the parts I want. So obviously I'm going to turn them upside down, select the crotch and it immediately fixes that hole and shows me what it will look like. Fixes that bit of the leg and the feet as well. And you'll see later what I should have done here is used the plane option. So you've got the plane, the tangent and the curvature. Curvature for this works fine. Uh, plane is what I should use for the bottom of the feet, which I'll end up using again in a second. So obviously now we have a full model, but what I want to do is actually go into some of this and remove bits of the mesh. So I'm just turning the detection up so I can remove those bits of the cutting mat that it scanned. And now it doesn't look very quick and then the bar just suddenly jumps. And you can see it's very accurate with getting rid of the bits you don't want, but it does seem to undo the hole filling. So I will now go back into edit and fix the holes the way I should have done to begin with. Going back to manual, keeping it on curvature, picking obviously that inner bit of the leg and the crotch again. And that's the only two bits that don't need a plane. There's only four holes in here, which is very impressive again. And there you go, there's those bits nice and smoothed over. And now using the plane tool, I'm gonna to do it to the bottom of his feet, just so they're nice and flat rather than rounding them the way they do. And you can see there, you've got kind of some texture going on where obviously it's not an even foot, so it's kind of had to jagged it a bit, but that's much better than rounding the foot over completely. And there you have it, there is your scanned STL file. And it's very quick to do. I know there's some bits that are sped up, but the bits that are sped up are just the processing part. This is phenomenal to be able to get a scan like this, this quickly. Now zooming in so you can see the detail. It's caught the eyes, which I would like to point out are like the smallest of raises in the 3D file. You can even see on the Omnitrix that it's not just triangles coming in at the sides, it's actually lines. This thing has some incredible accuracy to it. You can see there, even picking up like the little overhangs where I've glued those spikes on and the actual ab crunch built into the figure. Very nice job of picking up on details. So taking that file and putting it into Blender, this is where I do the repair on the figure. I've taken a cone from Tinkercad, reduced it down to six sides and messed around with that in sculpting after remeshing it so it's got more triangles to it to mess about with. Just pinching and pulling until I've got a bit that actually covers the neck correctly. And then Boolean differencing the body from that so that it creates a hole through it. And now we have a perfect fit to the figure that should fix the thin neck problem that a lot of you have pointed out. So just running that through on my Saturn 3, and I've done six of them because it's obviously a very big print bed. Uh, I didn't want to fill the whole print bed, but just figured I'd print more than one rather than wasting it. Uh, now these will be available in the shop and I will be also adding them uh, to the sets from now on. But you can see the paint that I'm using for my personal copy. Uh, and this was the last spittle at the bottom of the can. So it's a very poor paint job. I could not get any more out of this can if I tried harder. Um, and I don't think there's any way to have tried harder to get it out. I was messing about with this can for ages. So it's not the best paint finish on this neck piece. But you can see there, I've not had to heat this up or anything. This is just a straight slide fit on. And however, this does limit the actual rubbery part of the neck opening a little bit more. So I don't want to just force the neck in. 
So I'm going to heat the neck up a tiny bit with this heat gun. And you can see it pops in very easy. And this looks so much nicer. I'm infuriated that I didn't listen to you guys sooner. However, without this scanner, I wouldn't have been able to do it. The last scanner I've been using is a blue light scanner, which would have made it really hard. I would most likely have had to spray the figure. And I don't want to risk that spray sticking to the paintwork or damaging it or being difficult to remove, uh, which I know is low risk, but there's always a risk of it. So what I'm showing here is the fact that that little divot I left in the back either side allows him to look left and right, because obviously this 3D printed part does completely prevent him looking up and down and tilting his head left and right. But it does make him look much nicer, so I'm keeping this as a removable part. So if I want to pose him around, I can take it off and move his head fully. But for the shelf, I think this looks much nicer. Huge thank you to Creality for sending me this scanner. It's going to be a huge help with projects in the future. Now if you guys want this scanner for yourself, it will be launching on the 7th of May for a retail price of $759. However, the early bird price will be from the 6th of May until the 30th of May at midday Eastern Standard Time and that early bird price will be $699 and honestly I've got to say this is worth it this is one of the best 3D scanners I've seen in recent times especially for the price and just how nicely it scans with just how simple the user interface is and while I was sent this for free to advertise this thing is incredible I'm so happy to have this and there was no frustration while using this this thing just worked like a dream to begin with but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.